Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. We're going to take a look at our shortest video for topic 9.4. Example 14, we're going to talk about how to convert a rectangular equation into a vector value function. Let's take a look at this now. The example starts with, uh, if I can get to it, it says that we have this curve y equal x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. That certainly is rectangular. We want to convert that to vector valued function. What I'm trying to convey here is that the process of doing that is no different than the process that you used to convert rectangular to parametric. And a lot of students don't realize how much freedom they have when they do this. For example, if you're going to represent this as parametric, you would just simply set x equal to anything that you want it to equal. I'm not kidding. Usually we use t as a parameter. Sometimes theta is popular, especially if we're dealing with angles, but maybe t might be a little bit more appropriate here. You can dress up your x expression as x of t to make it look a lot more formal. And then anything that you want to put here with a value of t in it would be acceptable. Maybe you just want to put t. I'll be honest with you, that is by far and away the simplest approach. It's the approach that I would recommend. Then y of t, or just y, would be your expression up here, your equation, except rip out the x's and replace it with t's. Uh, make sure we replace all the x's with t's now. And we'd have something along the lines of this. And that's what your parametric equations would look like. Now that doesn't answer the question here, what is the vector value function? So all you would have to do is throw this back in to a vector value kind of uh, environment, and that would be perfectly acceptable. Now notice I'm using the ij notation format here. You could do that, or please understand, it's perfectly acceptable to use your vector bracket notation. Either way would be perfectly accepted. Now, to kind of prove to you, really, do you have all of that freedom that I just indicated? Well, let's take a look at this from a graphical standpoint. I have gone ahead and sketched the graph of the parametric equations that were used uh, in the first uh, version of, of, of my answer when I said I'm going to let x equal t. Now notice, as we talked about in a previous video, there is no interface on a graphing utility to sketch something uh, as a vector value function because you're just sketching parametric equations. So as you can see, this curve, which is probably some type of a cubic curve, as you can tell, right, from that rectangular equation, is represented here in blue by that particular parametric. Now, if I move on to my second page, what do I have? Well, it looks like I have the same graph, albeit a different color. But if I highlight over it and bring up the parametric equations, I want you to take a look at what you see here. For whatever reason, I decided to use the parameter t squared minus 3. A little bit different than t, of course. But notice, if that t squared minus 3 is used in each of those x positions of that y equation, we're going to get the same exact curve as if we had just used plain old t. And that's why it's a little bit easier sometimes to use that simplest parameter possible. Anyway, I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.